Hi, I'm Shane Tubbs. I'm an anatomist uh, from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I work primarily at the Children's Hospital of Alabama and teach uh, neurosurgical residents uh, in our uh, program at the university there. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite images from Netter's uh, Atlas and shows a beautiful uh, rendition of the axilla uh, and a supraclavicular exposure in addition to that, some of the proximal arm and there's so much going on in this image that you could spend uh, a long time just uh, reviewing this anatomy which is very accurately depicted here. Uh, we'll begin by showing uh, the clavicle and Dr. Netter uh, has nicely removed a little piece of the clavicle so that you can then look superiorly and see the um, contributions into the brachial plexus shown here in yellow. So we see the C5, 6, 7, 8, uh, T1 ventral rami coming together to form the uh, upper trunk from C5 and 6, uh, from the C7 and, excuse me, from C8 and T1, the lower trunk, and then C7 comes out as the middle trunk. Uh, we see the divisions nicely depicted just inferior to the clavicle, and then distal to that we see the cords in relationship to the axillary artery, and then we see distal branches uh, of the brachial plexus. Uh, nicely in this image, and almost in a surgical exposure of this region, Dr. Netter has uh, uh, retracted back the pectoralis major. Uh, the pectoralis minor is removed from its uh, coracoid process attachment, and he shows, for example, the innervation via the pectoral branches. We see the medial pectoral branch uh, from the medial cord piercing the pec minor, uh, innervating it, and then terminating in the pec major to uh, innervate it. We see the lateral pectoral branch uh, not innervating uh, the pec minor and then coming over to the pec major to provide it with its uh, nerve innervation. You see the connection in the pectoralis um, between the pectoral nerves in the ansipectoralis just distal to the thoracochromial artery which is very accurate anatomically. Uh, just uh, below that inferiorly we see the lateral uh, cord with a contribution uh, medially into the median nerve and then laterally we see the musculocutaneous nerve which is normally not depicted uh, so much distally uh, but Dr. Netter shows uh, it piercing the coracobrachialis and then via a cross section through the arm you can even see the course of the nerve uh, deep to the um, anterior arm muscles. You see the humerus and cross section uh, the radial nerve. Um, so in this picture not only do you get a surgical exposure of this uh, supra and infraclavicular region of the and then axilla inferiorly but we also have an axial cross-section that one might see in an MRI of the upper limb. Uh, vessels that are shown we see branches of the thyrocervical trunk, the uh, suprascapular transverse uh, cervical branch along the anterior scalene we see the phrenic nerve very nicely the anterior scalene muscle separating the subclavian vein from the subclavian artery. Uh, the subclavius muscle has been transected so that you could see deep to that the anatomy that's being depicted. We see the first rib with uh, the anterior scalene uh, attaching. As one moves back we see the relationships of the medial and lateral cords of the brachial plexus to the axillary artery and then behind Dr. Netter shows nicely the posterior a cord with uh, continuation terminal branches, the, both the axillary, radial nerve, and then we see all three of the subscapular nerves, both the upper subscapular to the subscapularis. Uh, we see the thracodorsal to the latissimus dorsi. We see the lower subscapular to the subscapularis and uh, teres major. Uh, all of the relationships of the vessels to the nerves are accurate uh, from an anatomical standpoint and uh, this picture shows uh, lots of anatomy uh, in one plate and uh, I know that our residents and students use uh, plates of this sort uh, on a daily basis to learn this anatomy. Thank you.